Hey y'all, today I'm going to show y'all how to deep fry seafood on the stove. So I know for a lot of y'all, frying at home might seem like scary or just a huge pain in the ass that you don't want to deal with. I'm going to try to break it down so that it seems approachable and easy to do. So when we fry seafood at the restaurant, that usually means catfish, oysters, or shrimp. Today I'm going to show you how to fry all three because they're all basically the same method. If you only want to fry one of these, just skip to that part of the video later. So before we get started, I want to make sure that my shrimp are peeled and deveined. These I actually bought from the grocery store previously frozen. They're already deveined, so I'm just going to finish peeling them. If I were putting these into like a, a po' boy or something, I would take the, the tails off. But because we're just going to pick these up and, and eat them with our hands, I'm going to leave the tail on for a, a more festive presentation and for a little handle to pick them up later. Now that I have my shrimp peeled, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set my oysters aside because they're already sitting in their own brine. But what I am going to do is I'm going to soak my shrimp and my catfish in whole milk. And it's just enough to cover it. What that does is it removes any fishy smell that the shrimp or the catfish might have. And then what it also does is it gives it the cornmeal dredge later or something that, to grab onto and add some flavor. I would soak them for at least an hour, but they could sit in the milk overnight. Okay. And now we're going to make our cornmeal dredge. Just for those who don't know, a cornmeal dredge is basically a, a cornmeal mixture that we coat our seafood in and we fry in, so it gives it a nice crispy texture and it, and it actually gives it a nice flavor as well. There's nothing worse than going through the trouble of frying seafood only to have it be bland. To start the, the cornmeal dredge, you're going to need flour, and it's just basic all-purpose flour, cornmeal, ground cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne pepper, black pepper, paprika, and granulated salt. And the, the reason we use granulated salt as opposed to kosher salt is the grains are finer. So the granulated salt grains will incorporate more evenly with the rest of the ingredients in the dredge. And this dredge couldn't be any easier. It's basically dump and whisk. And what we're gonna start with is two cups of flour, three quarters cup of cornmeal, and then you're gonna have a teaspoon of each of ground cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, also these are all teaspoons, a teaspoon of paprika, a half teaspoon of cayenne, full teaspoon of black pepper, and then one and a half teaspoons of granulated salt. And then all you have to do at this point is just whisk together. So once it's fully incorporated, we're going to move this into a shallow pan because you're going to want to coat your seafood with the dredge in a shallow pan when we're ready. But before we get started to frying, we're going to make our house chipotle remoulade next. So normally, like say for instance at a po' boy in New Orleans, you would get your po' boy with mayo, you might add some hot sauce to it. Here at Brenda's, what I do is I make my own house chipotle remoulade. The remoulade is a mayonnaise based sauce and I'm going to show you how to make uh, this recipe using a 12 ounce bottle of mayo. And you can just use the whole bottle in its entirety and turn it from plain boring mayo into very delicious chipotle remoulade. Besides that, you're also going to need capers red onion, chipotles in adobo, sugar, lemon juice, and a little bit of salt. Normally at the restaurant we would use red onions, but I don't have any right now, so we're gonna use scallions instead. And these are already sliced. I'm gonna need three tablespoons of mince, 
And it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, roughly three tablespoons would be ideal. Um, so I'm mincing this so that the flavors kind of meld together and nothing is too prominent. You don't want to bite into big chunks of scallions in your mostly smooth remoulade. Once this is minced, we're also going to mince uh, three tablespoons of capers. Because you're mincing them anyway, if you want to use the bigger capers, which are cheaper, that's fine. You're really just going for the flavor, not the size necessarily. That ought to do it. Chipotle's in adobo. These are smoked jalapeno uh, peppers that are in a, an adobo sauce. And for this, I'm using two tablespoons. And you do actually want to use, you want to get some of the sauce from the chilies in there. So there's one, there's two. This is pretty spicy, so if you're um, spice averse, use gloves. And remember, if you don't use gloves, don't pick your nose or touch your private parts later, because you're, you're liable to burn yourself. Okay, that's it. You can, you can edit the private part stuff out. Okay, now I'm gonna use some fresh lemon juice and I'll show you how to juice a lemon. One trick is to roll it a little bit first. What that does is it softens the rind and it kind of releases the juices. It'll be easier to juice after. Cut it in half. If you have a small uh, reamer, you can use that. I'm just gonna use my hands or um, could also just use a spoon and I'll strain the seeds out in a minute. But for this right now, I only need one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice. For my Chipotle remoulade, I'm gonna dump this entire bottle of mayo, 12 ounce bottle. Use whatever mayo you like. We're gonna throw in our minced capers, minced scallions, normally I'd use red onions, but I don't have any. Minced Chipotle chilies and adobo. Going to bring the heat and the smoke, salt, a little sugar. Sugar is important. Does it, it seems weird, but it actually is going to balance everything out. And then I'm going to show you a little trick because it, it drives me crazy to waste food. All that mayo in there. I'm going to pour my lemon juice in here and I'm going to shake it. And it's going to satisfy all my Virgo ir urges. <laughs> that brings me such pleasure. Goodbye, mayo. Hello, lemon juice. All right. And then we're going to whisk, and that's it. We have our remoulade, and you have enough for, I mean, depending on how much remoulade you eat, but enough for, you know, a couple meals or one big fat feast. Okay, so now that my chipotle remoulade is done, I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna grab my seafood and my dredge, and I'm gonna get ready to start frying. But before I do that, before I start dredging, I need to heat up my oil in my pan. So for deep frying, I'm gonna turn my flame on. There we go. And you can put it on a high flame just to get it heated up, but we're not gonna cook over a high flame. And I'm using, um, what am I using? I'm using canola oil. Use any oil you want, um, or any vegetable oil. Don't use olive oil because it, it's uh, not a high temperature oil. Oh, what the hell, I'm gonna add the whole bottle. And what I'll do later is after the oil cools down is I'll strain it, throw it in the fridge, so I can reuse it later. Unless I burn something in it, then I won't save it. That was a, 48 ounce bottle of oil. Really what it's about is trying to get enough depth. So right, what I have in here right now is probably about three inches of oil. Okay, just so long your oil is anywhere between 350, 375 degrees, you're good. And what I'm gonna do to check it, um, I already have a thermometer on here, so I know I'm good. 
Um, if you start to see that your oil is starting to smoke, uh, smoke's coming off, obviously low the temperature down, it's getting too hot. And I just take a little bit of the dredge and I sprinkle it into the oil and you can see how it fizzles and fries up real quickly but it doesn't burn or scorch. It's ready to go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do we'll, is we'll dredge our oysters. And all you need to do is take your hands, drop them in from their brine into the dredge. And we have enough dredge here and enough space in our pan to just do them all at once. You don't want to dump all this liquid in there because you're going to end up with a big gummy mess. These get lightly tossed in the dredge. So there's our oysters. Okay, now we're going to do our shrimp. It's the same idea. You're going to pull the shrimp out of the milk and you're going to drop it into the dredge separately not all on top of each other. And then we're gonna lightly toss, toss, toss. Do it lightly. Take that out. Set that on your plate. We'll do the same thing with our catfish that have been sitting in milk. Okay, so finally, the moment we've been waiting for, I'm gonna fry the catfish first because it takes the longest and um, it'll probably hold temperature better than the other seafood while you're waiting. So I'm actually just gonna pick this up with my hand and drop it right in there. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. there she goes. It's probably gonna take four, maybe five minutes because you're deep frying. You don't have to turn it over. Once it floats up, that means it's mostly cooked. I'm using this strainer. And while you're waiting on that, grab a, a plate or a pan, line it with paper towels, because once this is done, you want to go straight onto there, let it drain a little bit, let it sit while you fry the rest of your seafood. Okay, so we've been frying at about 350, 375, somewhere in between there, because it fluctuates um, for about five minutes. And you can see now that the catfish is nice and golden brown and it's floating. That's how you know that it's, that's how you really know it's ready. It's not just the color, it's the fact that it's floating. And then I'm gonna drop that on a paper towel lined plate. And then we're gonna fry our oysters next. You can just pick them up or you can even slide the oysters off the plate. They have a lot of water, so be prepared for some splatter and some bubbles. Don't be afraid. It's worth it. These don't take very long at all. Three minutes at the most. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, so that's been about three, three and a half minutes. You can see my oysters are, or you can hear my oysters have gotten a lot quieter. They're floating to the top and they're nice and brown. These are ready. Some people like their oysters fried a little harder, that's fine, just let it go a little longer. This is how I like them, I think they're perfect right now. Go ahead and pick up some of that extra debris out of the oil. Just get that out of there. All right, now, we're still at 350 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and fry our shrimp. Not as loud as the oysters. All right, so it's been about three and a half, four minutes. Um, the shrimp have gotten quieter. They're a nice crispy golden brown and they're starting to float. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out now. Turn that off. And there we go, here's our fried seafood.
ridiculous.